You may recall several months ago when the White House announced one of its newest hires, determined to make his administration resemble as closely as possible an early 20th century freak show, uh, Biden decided to give a top-level job in the Department of Energy to a man named Sam Brinton. Brinton was named the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Office of Spent Fuel and Waste Disposition and was granted, therefore, one of the highest security clearances in the department. This was an interesting, though not at all surprising choice, because Britain is a bizarre cross-dressing creep who identifies as a non-binary they-them. And that's about the most normal thing about him. So for your reference, um, here's a video from just a couple of years ago when Britain was an activist with the far-left group, group The Trevor Project, Project. And here he is explaining, in this video, I believe it is, the, the importance of pronouns. Pronouns are a fascinating part of modern culture. I don't think many people think about them very often until someone like myself or others say their pronouns. So when I introduce myself, I generally say, hi, my name's Sam Britton. I use they and them as my pronouns, and I serve as head of advocacy and government affairs for the Trevor Project. I give this before I even give my job because it's the important way that you're going to describe me not what I do, but who I am. And that I respect for my gender is really, really important. Of course, you know, everything he said there is nonsense, but um, he's dressed even more nonsensically. He looks like he got into a fight with a Hot Topic mannequin and lost. Or maybe he looks like a Jason Bourne cross-dressing with a costume he bought on clearance at Party City the day after Halloween. Worse yet, Britain is also a bestiality fetishist who enjoys having sex with men dressed like dogs. And if you're interested, you can learn more about that uh, in one of the Kink 101 workshops that he taught on college campuses. And finally, to complete Britain's resume, he also wrote an article for The Advocate in 2015 where he defended a website called Rent Boy. Rent Boy, was it called? Which had been uh, shut down by the feds for facilitating underage prostitution. And in the since-deleted article, Britain worried that there, there would be serious ramifications, quote-unquote, to the gay community if the prostitution site was taken down. He argued that Rent Boy was performing a service by giving young people a way to, quote, earn a living by selling their bodies. So this guy is, to summarize, a sick, twisted deviant. And for that reason, not in spite of it, but because of it, he was made a high-level official in the Biden administration. And that brings us to the latest news, first reported by a site called uh, alphanews.com. And here it is, quote, law enforcement at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport were alerted to a missing suitcase in the baggage claim area on September 16th. The adult female victim said she flew into MSP on a Delta flight from New Orleans and went to retrieve her check bag at Carousel 7. Airport records confirmed the Navy Blue Vera Bradley roller bag arrived at 4.40 p.m. but was missing from the carousel. So law enforcement reviewed video surveillance uh, footage from the baggage claim area and observed Brinton removing a navy blue roller bag from Carousel 7, according to a criminal complaint. The complaint says Brinton removed a luggage tag from the bag, placed it into a handbag that he was carrying, and then left the area at a quick pace. Brinton arrived at MSP Airport around 2, 427 on American Airlines flight from Washington, D.C., but did not check a bag. Police showed the surveillance video to the victim, and she confirmed it was her bag. Now, by the way, just a side note here, take special note of the fact that he didn't check a bag himself, which would negate any defense that he took the bag by accident, thinking that it you know, was one of his own bags. There's no reason for him to even be in the baggage claim area if he didn't check a bag to begin with, unless he was there specifically to steal a bag, which appears to be the case. Back to the article says, Britain left the airport in an Uber for a stay at the Intercontinental St. Paul Riverfront Hotel, where he checked in with the blue bag. The complaint says he returned to MSP on September 18th with the bag in hand for departing the flight back to Washington, D.C. Uh, surveillance video from Dulles International Airport shows Britain traveling with the bag on an October 9th return trip from Europe. The victim said the estimated value of the bag and its contents was around $2,325. Police questioned Britain about the missing bag in an October 19th phone call. Uh, ninth phone call, and asked him directly if he took anything that did not belong to him. Uh, not that I know of, Britton allegedly responded. He later admitted to taking the bag, but said the clothes inside were his. I don't know how that would work, according to the complaint. If I had taken the wrong bag, I'm happy to return it, but I don't have any clothes for another individual. Uh, that was my clothes when I opened the bag, he told police. So someone else flying from a different city had a bag that it magically had his clothes in it. 
Britton allegedly called the investigating officers two hours later and apologized for not being completely honest. This time, Britton said that he took the bag because he was tired and thought that it was his, the complaint says. He was tired. So that makes sense. I mean, who hasn't been so tired while traveling that they wander down to the baggage claim, bleary-eyed, take a random bag, walk out with it, take an Uber to the hotel, and then keep the bag and travel with it again two weeks later? Happens to the best of us. If it's possible, his excuse only gets worse from here. Because he later told police that when he opened the bag in his hotel room, he, he, you know, at that point he noticed that it wasn't his, but he was nervous that they'd think that he stole the bag. So his solution was to take all the clothes out and leave them in the drawers in the hotel room, but take the bag with him. Because he said he thought it would be weird to leave the bag with its contents in the room. I suppose it's no surprise that this guy doesn't have the clearest concept of what is weird and what isn't. Because if he did, he'd realize that of all the choices he could have made throughout this ordeal, he made each time definitely the weirdest one. And that's if his story is even true, which of course it almost certainly isn't. Uh, police say that they never recovered any clothes from his hotel room. Uh, by all appearances, then, he kept not only the bag, but he kept the clothing as well. And so he's now charged with, uh, with a felony. Okay, so this whole saga raises a question. It raises, indeed, more than one question. Um, and so a few of those questions are things like, you know, why would this guy brazenly steal a random woman's luggage? I mean, didn't he realize there are security cameras all over the airport? It's an airport. It, it may have been a nice suitcase as far as suitcases go. I don't know. But was it worth the criminal charge and public embarrassment that we're sure to follow? You could not choose a worse place for stealing luggage than an airport. I don't recommend stealing luggage at all. But if you're going to try it, you're better off trying to steal it from like the store where it's sold than from an airport where there are 15 cameras every five paces. So what could possibly motivate this sort of behavior? As to that last question, I can only speculate, but there is one answer that seems pretty evident here. It would seem that Brenton took the bag because he has a cross-dressing fetish, and he gets off on the idea of wearing some strange woman's clothing. Why is he willing to put his career and reputation on the line? Well, partly because he knows he's in a protected class and he can do whatever he wants, but also partly because deviant perverts like Sam Brenton are willing to risk pretty much anything in pursuit of their weird, sick pleasures. They are driven almost exclusively by their sexual desires. This is true of any fetishist who feels the need to live out those fetishes in public. Not only to live them out publicly, but to force the public to actively participate in them. Because this is what modern tolerance is so often about. It's about allowing people, usually men, to involve the whole world in their sexual fetishes. Many of the men who call themselves trans are really just autogynophiles, and many of them who call themselves non-binary are really just cross-dressing fetishists. It's as simple as that. And we have elevated the fetish to a lifestyle that we all not only have to tolerate, which we shouldn't even have to do that, but, but also uh, 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 affirm it, which is to participate in it. We have empowered these troubled people in our society rather than encouraging them to seek psychological treatment and spiritual healing for their perverse and unnatural desires, which is what they need. And when you empower that enough, you end up and you empower it to the level that Sam Britton has been literally empowered by being given a uh, position in the White House. You end up with exactly what happened at the Minneapolis airport. And that is why Sam Britton is most certainly, and I imagine probably not for the first time on this show, canceled. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.